right tire and service on West Fort Williams in Sylacauga is the right place for you. We carry the right tires for your car. Goodyear, Cooper, General, Michelin, and lots more. Right Tire and Service is also your right choice when it comes to all of your automotive service needs. Whether it's an oil change, front end alignment, brake service, or air conditioner work, make the right choice the first time and stop by Right Tire and Service, Silicaga. This man is not a mime. He's merely expressing his joy of switching from his old bank to Heritage South Credit Union. His story unfolds through the rare, spontaneous exuberance of interpretive dance, which anyone can learn with a little help from Heritage South. Isn't it time you said hello to Heritage South? Brought to you by Alabama State Parks, the Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. One trip to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and you can show your kids the space program in ways that no textbook ever could. You'll learn the history of the Apollo missions, how to pilot the space shuttle, and that the moon is actually just a short drive away in Alabama. And welcome to another edition of It's Tyler Digger. We're honored uh, this week to have as our special guest, Alan Watson, Chief of Police of Tyler Digger. And uh, of course, I've been knowing the Chief for a long time. I had the honor of uh, hiring him in in 1985 as a I don't know. He wasn't a rookie, please. I guess he just just a yeah, I was a rookie. Just a yeah, bad, bad rookie, ain't he? I was green. You're bad green. You've done it. You've, you've come a long way, Chief. I've, I've come come full circle. <laughs> it's uh, in, indeed an honor to have Alan. We're going to be talking about some of the good things going on with the police department there in Talladega. But Alan, if you would uh, share with the people where you came, I know you're from the Hatch area, and share with them where you went to school, who your wife is, children. Uh, dogs and cats and this little bit of personal information. A lot of people know you as, as a chief, but they don't know anything about your background. So. Well, I, I was, uh, Larry, thank you for having me on the show. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, I was born and raised in Anniston, Alabama. Uh, went to school in Anniston, graduated from Anniston. Uh, my whole family's uh, from Anniston, or was from Anniston. Uh, don't have but one uncle left now in Anniston, uh, but I graduated from Anniston High School. Uh, 1976 and uh, went to work at Lee Brothers and and uh, started going to Gadsden State Community College. Uh, worked several years in different fields, worked in the, uh, I got in the uh, uh, paramedic field as an EMT and an EMT intermediate and worked for Aniston Rescue Squad for years uh, before I came here amongst other jobs and, and uh, had some friends that were police officers in Talladega and wanted me to come down, so I applied, and, and after a while, I, so I started my career at Talladega, uh, 1985. How long did you stay as a paramedic or with paramedic service? Uh, from 1976 to probably early 80s, probably mm -hmm. 82, 83. So a lot of things. So a lot of things. Learned, learned a lot yeah. uh, about law enforcement working through them, uh, through the paramedics and working around police officers, and that's really what I wanted to do. So uh, I, I came down here and, and didn't know anything about being a police officer. Uh, was, uh, who was the, was it Chief Hamlin, Mike Hamlin? Yeah, Mike Hamlin Mike was Hamlin the chief. chief. He's the one that hired me, yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, so I've, you know, just worked my way through the ranks as a patrolman, uh, married to Tammy Watson. She works at Brandon's. Uh, office City. She she's on outside sales, and I have two daughters, Melissa and Jamie. Uh, 
One dog, one shih tzu. Uh, yeah, I've got a shih tzu. He's got one shih tzu. We got two. Yeah. I, we got double trouble. Yeah. Uh, and, and his his little non-human is about as spoiled as our two. Yeah. Are. And uh, sleeps where he wants to and eats what he wants to. That pretty much runs the house. We got three <laughs> grandchildren, and uh, so that's we're in the uh, ball season right now, baseball season, uh, batting machine. So that's that's kind of how old are they? Uh, well, I got a granddaughter that is 13 years old and two grandsons that are seven. Both of them are seven. Both of them playing ball. One of them's playing, one ball. playing ball. Yeah, one of them's playing ball. When My youngest play. daughter's son plays plays ball. When they get up a little bit older in school, there'll be one of them maybe playing sports over here and another playing sports over here. And, yeah. And, and mama mm -hmm. and grandpa will be pulling their hair out trying to get them to where they're supposed to be at the same time. It's fun, but I understand why uh, you have children when you're young. Because I don't, I, I have a hard time keeping up now. Uh, Chief, I know uh, through the years, of course, you're living in Anderson, big city, and then of course you just lived in Ohatchee for a while. Uh, did you have a hard time adjusting to Talladega? I, I know when you came here in '85, things were, um, I can't say different. Well, I guess it was different. You had a mayor council form of government, now we have a, a city manager form of government. And, and of course, I'm digressing a little bit. I went to work on the police department in 1965 uh, when I got out of service. I stayed about six months. And folks, at that time, we had an old rambler that had about 200 million miles on it. And you drive about five miles an hour and it's just like this. You couldn't hardly hold it in the road. We had walkie-talkies that you couldn't from the police station to the car, if you were within 15 or 20 feet of the station, <laughs> it wouldn't pick up. Yeah. And uh, the equipment was deplorable. Uh, had a one <clears throat> microphone uh, uh, operation, and it was it was, it was bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you came on, that was probably not a whole lot better. Well, we had a few more cars, but not a lot. We really didn't. There, were, there, were, there were days that I would come to work that there'd be three of us in a car because a couple of cars would be down. Uh, because they ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and, and they break down. So, yeah, we've come a long way uh, in, in the uh, to the mayor, former government, to the city manager. Uh, it's um, We moved down here, I think I worked here about three or four months living in Anniston, and I told my wife, I said, I'm, I'm tired of this drive. We're moving to Talladega. And I did not like it at first when I moved here. I mean, I love the city, but did not like living here. It took just a little bit of getting used to it. Well, you're coming from a big city like Anderson. Yeah, it, it was different as, you know, it, it took me a while to figure out uh, that you had to go to the back of a furniture store to pay your phone bill. I wasn't used to that. Uh, but once you get used to that and the closeness, really, of the community, both of us just love Talladega, really did. And, and uh you know, I, I'll always love Aniston. That's why I was born and raised. But uh, yeah, it, it is. Even though there's really not anybody there anymore, uh, both of my folks are deceased, and of course my grandparents. So uh, there's just me and my brother and sister, and neither one of them live in Aniston. So we'll uh, we'll probably do this after the break. Uh, we'll talk about all the good things, all the accomplishments that has happened under the chief's administration. Uh, some of the equipment and the cars and so forth that's, uh, that has been gotten or obtained with grants and, and uh, money that we've got through the budget. We'll do this after the break. But let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, when you came to Tyler here in 85, uh, you you worked as a police officer, trainee or rookie or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you have to go to the academy. Right. Back, back when I was uh, coming up and being trained, uh, the city sent you to uh, Montgomery. Alabama to the police academy, so they would, uh, you were gone for back then seven weeks, and they, they put us up at the Whitley Hotel in downtown Montgomery, uh, and uh, give us, each one of us, cash money, certain amount of money for the whole seven weeks, and we had to keep receipts for our meals and all that and bring it back, uh, and it was, uh, Montgomery was well known to be a very tough academy, and it was. But it was well worth it. You learned a lot, and you learned discipline, and a lot of those things that, in law enforcement, you just have to have. So uh, it was uh, well worth it. I was very glad when it was over. A lot of uh, exercising, a lot of a lot of physical. exercising. Yeah, 
um, you know, they tell you it's not going to be tough. We're just going to do a few of these push-ups, a few of these sit-ups. They just so didn't tell you training in the Army. until you get it perfect, you're going to do it over and over. So uh, they've all got their tricks. So, uh, But it, it was good for us. And there was three of us that went uh, that year. Is there uh, – I didn't know I was going to ask you this, but is there any criteria of hiring a police officer uh, physical fitness? Is there any law or any – policies that uh, I know we see on TV sometimes up north in different places you see some of these officers come out on the scene three or four hundred pounds mm -hmm. don't know how they can hardly walk much less how they can be effective as a police officer yeah is there any criteria of uh, physical fitness there's not a requirement in the state of Alabama right now for a yearly fitness uh, test uh, now you have to to enter law enforcement. You have to complete and pass a physical agility course and a physical fitness course uh, before you will. They do that the very first day of the academy, uh, and if you don't pass that, they send you home. So now, what happens in a lot of cases as men and women get older, they put on pounds. Some put on more than others. So there's no requirement in the state of Alabama at this time that requires you to stay within a certain uh, frame. Is there any city policy that requires it? Do you all have any uh, in-house policy? No, no we, we don't have any in-house policy that requires you to have a certain weight or uh, the ability to run a mile and a half within so many minutes or do so many push-ups every year. I think that's coming. Uh, and it will be like everything else. It will be pushed by a post, which is Peace Officer Standard and Training Commission. The reason I ask that question, you're, you're dealing with, and I know this firsthand uh, by seeing things that goes on, you're dealing with some very athletic folks that y'all deal with every day. They work out. They're, they're right. in good health physically, and, and, uh, and, and occasionally you have to chase them right. uh, on foot. Right. And if you're overweight or if you're out of shape, you can't shoot him. No. <laughs> Try to outrun him, and it's tough. Well, we don't catch them all. And, and uh, you know, what, what a lot of people don't understand, those people ha have got a whoever's running from us. Um, their adrenaline's much grander than ours to get away than it is for us to catch them, <laughs> although we want to catch them. And, and, the adrenaline and, kicks in fast, doesn't it? Yeah, because they really don't want to be caught. So... <laughs> But, but I think the, the guys and, and the ladies do a, a, a great job at that. And I don't like chases, whether it's in, on foot or in cars. Generally, somebody, something happens to somebody. So, But that, that's part of it. How many officers do we have now? We've got a total of 43 certified officers. Detective on the division. That's detective division. That's everybody. That's patrol, How many do we have in super. Detective division? Uh, six. six right now. Well, we're fixing to lose one. You know, our captain, Captain Ronnie Jones, is I retiring. I the great He's retiring uh, next re month? Or uh, this no, month? we're retiring. His last day is the 20th of uh, June. this month. Yes, okay. Wednesday the 20th. We're going to have a retirement party for him, City Hall. So He's head of the detective. Please come. Right, he what, is. What's that date? Uh, Wednesday the 20th, 2 o'clock, in the uh, council chambers, if okay. you can make it. What uh, you have... Uh, you don't have an assistant chief as such. No, I have two captains. Two captains. Two captains, right. I have a captain in patrol. They serve captain. as an assistant. They do. And, and any time they're responsible for their particular division and responsibilities. And then if I'm out of town, going out of town for some reason, then I leave one or the other one in charge who is, would actually be the acting chief to make a decision if something needed to be decided on while I was gone. We're going to a break. And uh, we're going to come back and we talk about some of the problems that the chief sees as far as drugs, the new shake and bake stuff is coming on. Of course, we have a drug task force that's heavily involved in that, trying to break it up. And we're going to talk about a lot of the good equipment, new equipment uh, that the chief has been instrumental in involved in, 911, some of these things that you might be concerned with. Be right back.
trip to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama, and you can show your kids the space program in ways that no textbook ever could. You'll learn the history of the Apollo missions, how to pilot the space shuttle, and that the moon is actually just a short drive away in Alabama. State Parks, the Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. And welcome back to It's Talladega. Our guest today is Alan Watson, Chief of Police of Talladega. We've been talking about uh, different things that's going on through the years from the, where we were and where we are today. Chief, I know every day, every day you pick up the paper. I read a lot of papers. I read Birmingham News, Anderson Star, Daily Home. I watch a lot of uh, TV, uh, news, internet. And it looks like uh, everybody is selling drugs to each other. I mean, it's just people shooting each other, uh, being caught shaking baked labs in the car at uh, restaurants, uh, the motels. Yeah. People are just going drug crazy. Uh, drug task force is out in full uh, numbers. What can we do? Uh, well, in, in the, it is. And, and the drug task force is doing a a great job you've seen in the paper over the last week or so some of the particulars that have happened uh, in which that's a combination of their hard work uh, it, it boils down to the like I said it, it's it's uh, communications between the citizens business owners suspicious uh, incidents being seen communicating with the police I know it's Anderson Star this week uh, or last week, I guess it was, they, they raided this convenience store there, and they got these items called Spice. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, paper this week, the district attorney, uh, Mr. McVeigh, is going after the assets of this business. Right, and, and should, and, and that wakes, that's how you get to the business owners that, that are, are doing these kind of things. So uh, I'm glad he's doing that. Uh, yeah, these shake and bake situations are dangerous. We had one. Uh, matter of fact, I won't say Aniston, Calhoun County got in a car chase and chased one into Talladega. Mm -hmm. uh, and we ended up getting them over by Northwood Cutoff, and they had a shake and bake in their car. What, I'm not planning to ask this question, but I will. What, do we have a policy on chase? I know you we see in Birmingham all the time where they're having wrecks and cars being torn up and people being hurt. What kind of policy do we have? We, we have a policy that, that requires uh, an officer who gets in a car chase, he must make certain decisions, must, must say certain things on the radio as to uh, the speed he's doing, the direction of travel, the weather condition, uh, uh, what area he's coming into, um, the amount of cars on the road, which determines uh, whether a sergeant or a lieutenant, his supervisor, come in depending on those situations, can stop that. The officer can stop it, too. Uh, that only one other car, City of Talladega Police car, can be involved with it. And if there's two of them, the one following the other one, then the, uh, he does the radio communication. So we do have a, a good policy on it. And, um, and what I've seen and heard, uh, I've, I've heard even officers stop them. So it just takes training for them to understand and not get the tunnel vision that, that officers do get to understand, is this worth, irregardless of what the person did? Because the biggest majority of the time, it's not major, no, unfortunately. Major. Yeah. Uh, is it worth putting other citizens' lives at risk over this? Right. But at the same time, you can't just not because everybody would run, or not everybody, but a lot of people would run. From time to time, I get calls. It's uh, been, been a rarity since I've been back in office about someone complaining about this, complaining about that. They, they were stopped and they didn't appreciate this. And I always tell them, if you feel like it, you've got a problem, put it in writing and sign it. Either give it to me and I'll get it to the chief, or you can go straight to the chief. He's always got an open door policy. 
and if you feel strong enough about the issue, I can assure you that Chief Watson will investigate it, and he'll give you an answer in writing. And if you don't like what he tells you, then you have an opportunity to go to the city manager, the city council, or whatever. Uh, Chief, the policy seems to be working for the most part, pretty good. It does. I'll put down a list of who you need to contact if, right. if you don't like the, the results of, of my uh, uh, investigation. And, uh, and a lot of times I can handle it in the office without that. And uh, so I, I encourage if, if officers are not doing what they're supposed to do, if I can find out about it, then the, the purpose is to correct it. That, right. That's what we want to do is correct it. And we were talking about off the air just a few minutes ago that police officers are human too. Uh, we, we Sometimes I have a bad day. I try my best to, if I get mad at mayor, I don't take it out on, on the citizens around town. Of course, I, I don't get mad at mayor much because I know better. She can, uh, she can change my attitude pretty quick if she needs to. But, but officers do have, uh, they're human. They have family problems from time to time or in financial problems. Everybody does. And uh, maybe sometimes it overrides into their everyday life. And this is what the chief's got to make sure or wants to make sure that uh, if he's got someone that's getting too far out or not doing what they're supposed to do, he can rein them back in. And we welcome your response. And also, uh, Chief, I'm saying this, and you can uh, agree or disagree. If you see something going on in your community, call the chief or call me, and I'll pass it on. I can assure you. Uh, they will respond. A lot of times people say, well, I don't want to call the police. They ask me who I am. And then they go tell someone else, I call the police. You call the police. Yeah. And, and we have, but people need to become involved in their community if they've got a problem. They do. And that's, that's the part of the, the biggest part of the solution, I think, is communication, Larry, between the citizens of any type uh, and the police force. And the police force back to the community. We've some talk to us and some won't. Some are fearful of us, and I understand that. Uh, and we're trying to correct that. You know, that, that's part of what we're trying to do is get out in the community and, and let these people know that, you know, irregardless, we know people make mistakes and we have to put them in jail sometimes. They're not bad people. Not everybody that goes to jail are right. bad people. Uh, but we have to do our jobs, and we're not going to hold that against them. So the next time you see us, we're not going to throw you in jail because you've already been once. Uh, you know, we don't mind being your friend, talking to you, and giving you information. You give us information, um, and we keep it confidential. Right. We do. Now, but if you call dispatch, that's part of their process is to ask questions. Who is this? So they can call back. But those are emergencies. Uh, you call our tip line or you call my office and you tell me I want to be anonymous but I want to tell you about this situation then I'm going to write it down and tell me I don't need to know who you are I'll pass it on to either the drug task force or my own investigators we'll look into what they said and if it pans out then it pans out and we've accomplished our goal right. and that is uh, arresting the person who committed whatever crime it is Chief, uh, within the last uh, three or four years, we've got probably another two or three minutes. In the last three or four years, uh, the, the uh, judge issued an order that the, uh, had to go to a different kind of paramedic service. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it took a long time, I thought it was a long time, a couple of years, two and a half years. Yeah. They have finally got together a good policy and they've got a paramedic service that's responding to accordingly. Right. How's this working out? It, it's, it, it's working pretty good so far. Uh, it's not perfect, but it, it's better than it was. We're not having the delay problems uh, that we were having. We're not having the staging problems that we were having. Uh, so giving it to through the RFP process and bidding it out and doing that and, and awarding the bid, one company has a job. And so they can now staff their self, knowing that they're responsible for all these 911 calls within this area. And, and so they learn, they know where they're going, so their time gets better as, you know, the people stay. Right. And there's not 
they've got enough ambulance sitting there all the time to respond to the calls that, was that a we key. have. That, that was a key. I don't think I've had, uh, I don't think I've had any calls since. Yeah. I really haven't had any really complaints right. since, since we've done that. Uh, so. How's the county jail system working out? Working great. It, it is. I like it. I, I think that's one of the best things we ever did, and I think every police chief in uh, Talladega County will tell you that. Uh, that's even the ones like here in Sylacauga that have to travel up. Jonesburg, it's Jordan. in my backyard, yeah. so it's it, it's great for us. But even those that have to travel up, it's uh, it's real good. In case you don't know what we're talking about, folks, we're, all the cities in the county have gone to one uh, central jail. The county handles everything. The city arrests the folks, or someone gets a warrant for so forth. You you go to the county jail and you bond out from there, and then. Uh, the county jail handles everything. That's correct. That's correct. It works yeah. out really good. We release them. We still release them, but they're responsible for them. They, I mean, they're just better prepared than individually each of us cities having our own jail. Well, they got a medical staff always there. Right. Uh, so it's just uh, they got more employees there, more correctional officers. So uh, it, it's it's much better now. We've got about maybe 30 seconds, though. Is 911 doing okay? 911 is great. It, it's uh, it's another good uh, process. It, it's more professional than individually did. All the emergency calls come to a central location. They're trained. Uh, they do EMD uh, dispatching, which none of us officially could do because it takes specialized training right. to to <clears throat> talk to you about emergencies and talk you through it. Chief, I can't thank you enough for being a guest on It's Talladega. We got a lot of good things going on in Talladega, and it's folks like Chief Watson and all the good staff we have there, all the police officers. That, uh, it's helping make Talladega what it is. We're open for business, and uh, if you have any complaints at all, you can't get to the chief. I doze but never close. You can get me 24-7. You tune in next week for another edition of It's Talladega.